Morning. Another day, another real world test. Today, we're doing it on the new Asus ZenBook Duo, which is the second kind of dual screen laptop like this from Asus. Now, if you're not familiar though, real world test on this channel is where I'm gonna go through my normal day and bring the laptop along. We'll test the laptop out in various scenarios throughout the day and also check in on the battery while we do that. And um, we'll talk about some of the things that I like and don't like in my short time with this laptop. But first things first. Coffee. Check. Okay, now besides the two screens, let's talk about what else there is to this laptop. For now, know that there are two versions, the ZenBook Duo and the ZenBook Pro Duo. That's more powerful and has a 15.6 inch touchscreen versus this one, which is the more portable and less powerful version with a 14 inch 1080p touchscreen capable of 400 nits, which I can confirm is enough to see the screen outside at this cafe, for example. Now the chassis is made out of a magnesium alloy in what Asus calls Celestial Blue. Regardless, I like it. It is a nice feeling and I prefer to the plastic laptops a lot of manufacturers keep making nowadays. Inside, we have a choice of an 11th gen Intel i5 or i7 paired with up to 32 gigs of RAM and either an Intel XE integrated GPU or an Nvidia MX450 GPU. Now I have the i7 version with the Intel XE GPU in it and Honestly, I used the Razer Book 13 very briefly. It was a pre-production model, but it also had that XE graphics in it. And I was pleasantly surprised in the very short time I had with it. So I'm actually very curious how this will do and we'll test that later. Now for ports, we have two Thunderbolt 4 USB-C ports. Both can be used for charging, by the way. And we have one USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type-A port, an HDMI 1.4 port, a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, and a micro SD card slot. Now beyond all that, we have up to one terabyte NVMe SSD. We have Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.0, and a 71 hour battery, which is actually pretty decent for a laptop of this size. Speaking of, this is an Intel Evo certified laptop. And what that means is that Intel actually tested it and confirmed that it will pass certain thresholds for say, lighter size, certain specs, and longer battery life. Now with that said, I've been sitting and writing and using the web browser for about an hour now at this cafe at 50% brightness on better battery mode. And we went from 95% to about 87%. Okay, now let's get out of here because it's winter here in New York City and these videos are just getting harder and harder to film outside. I'm not gonna lie, like my hands are numb. So let's head to the studio, at least for a bit. Hello. Okay, at the studio. It's funny, no matter the temperature outside, even if we don't have the heaters on in here, it's a sauna in here. It's always melty hot. But right now, I'm not actually complaining. Okay, and now let's talk a little bit about why those dual screens are actually kind of cool. So firstly, the second display, which Asus calls the ScreenPad Plus, is a 12.6 inch 1920 by 515 resolution display. So it's just under half the aspect ratio of a typical screen. Now on this model, compared to the last one, the screen actually raises seven degrees when you open the laptop instead of staying flush with the keyboard, which is a very welcome thing to me as it, it honestly makes it a lot easier to see. This lifting also reveals the speakers, which are Harman and Kardon tuned, but also vents. So the gap here, along with the fact that the bottom of the laptop has more exhaust vents and lifts up as well, makes for a pretty clever way to utilize the unique design to get better cooling. Both screens also have this matte coating to them, which I like, and feels like it just makes them easier to see to me. So what can you do with the second screen? Well, Windows actually treats it just like it's a separate monitor. So you can easily drag any window you want down there and it'll run just like it would if you were plugged into an external monitor. Asus even added a few shortcuts in Windows to throw things down there faster by swiping your finger on it or hovering on the arrow overlay and choosing to snap the window down there into either a full screen, half screen, or a third, and combinations of all of those. Now that alone, of course, isn't as handy as having like a full-sized monitor that you can plug into because of its smaller size, of course, but it kind of makes up for that by, you know, being a part of the laptop. Since it's always there, even on the road, without carrying anything else with you, like a portable monitor, for example. And yeah, while there are a few apps that I now use down there most of the time, I'd say it's not just a gimmick, like it might initially appear to someone who hasn't used it. It isn't perfect though, of course, with apps sometimes having issues with the abnormal aspect ratio or smaller resolutions where snapped into a third of the screen, like say Evernote here does, and Spotify as well, which is a little annoying, but it isn't too bad. And of course, that has nothing to do with Asus. 
It's just that apps usually have a minimum width that they allow, and the third of this screen is smaller than that minimum. Now, most of the time, my configuration down there is my tasks, Telegram, and Evernote, and sometimes Spotify, and makes it easier to control music from there. Otherwise, maybe it's a few articles from the web that I need to reference while writing, etc. And it doesn't seem like much, I know, but it's, it's kind of nice. You can also save these configurations to get to them easily in the Screen Expert Control Center that's been redesigned, actually. That control center can be moved around now as a floating dot on the second display, and then tapped to get it to some customizable shortcuts for brightness, showing all of your open apps, etc. But more useful is the app drawer that can be customized here for those configurations that I mentioned, but also for apps that you might use down there more often, like for me, Spotify. But the one thing in here that I actually thought was super clever is the Asus Control Panel not to be confused with the Asus Control Center. Basically, it's a software version of a control panel, like this one here that editors sometimes use to speed up their workflows. The idea is that you can create dials, switches, sliders, etc., and set them to custom functions so those functions are a lot easier to control instead of, say, like moving a slider with your mouse, for example. Now, unfortunately, this only works for a few select programs from Adobe, but they are at least popular ones, including Premiere Pro, Lightroom Classic, Photoshop, and After Effects. You can customize each button, add and remove them, etc., in the control panel settings, and they appear automatically on the second display whenever that app is opened. Honestly, I love this idea as carrying around this and like having to buy more modules to get more controls is partly the reason why I don't use it as much as I would like to. Now, of course, it's not a replacement for the kinetic feeling you get when you use one of those. And so like, you know, maybe you want one of those anyway. But the other downside to this is that not all of the functions I would like to see are available. And of course, it'd be nice to see it for more programs. Okay, so now that brings us to actually testing out some editing in some form or another. As again, I am very curious to see how that Intel XE GPU handles my like rather more difficult for most computers workflow. Okay, let's start with editing in Lightroom. I'm taking a raw photo from my Sony a7S III. Like this is kind of my process for creating a thumbnail to some degree. We're gonna kind of mimic that at least. So let's see what it can do. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna try is just to let it do auto correction on it because that uses some like more processing power. So I just wanna see if we can do that and how quickly, ready? No problem. Let's just kind of mess with the sliders a little. Let's maybe add some texture and clarity, which again, use a lot of processing. Let's maybe mix some colors up and no issues. Now let's move this into Photoshop. Okay, so now it's opened up in Photoshop and they're linked is kind of how we did it. So it's a .tiff file, which is still like a raw format of file, which is a little harder on the computer. So let's see how it does. Okay, so we're gonna use the quick selection tool, which uses a little bit of computational stuff to figure out the edges of things and decide what it is you wanna select. So it's a little more challenging for the computer, so we're gonna use that first. And let's just highlight me first, along with the phone. We're just gonna right click that, layer by copy. Okay, now we're gonna use the quick selection tool again, and let's just grab the phone, for example. Okay, then we're gonna turn that into another layer via copy. And then let's just mess with the shadows and highlights for the fun of it. And now let's mess with the vibrance and saturation. And this is where, you know, some other computers I've tested, which I'll link to below, had a bit of a problem with it. No problem. So honestly, that's not bad at all. Um, but let's try some video editing. And based on the specs, I would say that this isn't gonna be the greatest video editing laptop. I mean, it has integrated graphics, etc. And honestly, the 15 inch Pro Duo will have an RTX 3070 in there and that will have no issues with any of the video editing that I would be doing. So that's obviously like the more appropriate choice for a video editor. But again, I'm a little curious about the XE graphics in there because the little tiny amount of time that I had with it, it seemed to do better than I thought it would. So. Let's see if that's the case here. Okay, so first let's do Premiere and try some 8-bit 4K footage for my Sony a7S III. Okay, nothing crazy when I play that back, it, it works just fine. Okay, I'm kind of impressed with that, I'm not gonna lie, uh, but now let's just push it and just see what happens. Let's try a video that I already edited in Resolve that has my 10-bit footage, multiple iPhone videos side by side with text, color correction, etc. It usually just kills all but the highest spec to GPU, so let's just see. And even at quarter resolution, which is the lowest I can do here on DaVinci, no. Okay, and with all PCs, there's a big difference between plugged in and not. That was all unplugged, but we're gonna plug it in and let's just see if that gives it the boost that it needs. And it does not. And lastly, really quick, 
we're gonna try performance mode, which is something that Asus put in here that actually changes the wattage for the CPU from the 15 watts that it's normally set at to 28 watts. And that supposedly boosts performance by about 20%. So let's see if that gives it enough. And no, but that's to be expected. If it did that, I would, I would have been pretty, pretty darn impressed actually. Now again, you should be looking at the Pro Duo if you're trying to do high-end video editing. And I, I'm actually, again, I'm a little impressed that this machine could even handle the 4K 8-bit footage in Premiere in full resolution. I swear something's going on with that XE chipset. I'm actually gonna talk to Intel about this, but let me know if you guys want me to do a decoder episode, which is my explainer series here on the channel on what XE is and how it works. And there's some voodoo going on because it's not just like a spec bump. They must be doing something else behind the scenes. But yeah, let me know if you guys would like to see that. Okay, let's check on the battery like we do. After an hour and 15 minutes of photo editing and video editing and just kind of pushing the machine as hard as it can, we lost 28%. All right, and now I have dinner with a friend, so let's head to that, and then we'll head home and try to draw some conclusions about this laptop. So I told my friend Olivia, who I'm about to meet, uh, and her husband, Jean, that I would give them an extra robot vacuum that I just happened to have, because if you watched my AirPods Max real world test, or if you follow me on social, they just got a new puppy and they could apparently use the help. So we're gonna give them this little guy. Hello. Hey, no, no, no. Hi, yeah. Oh, no, 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 down, down, get down, oh, get down. Up on this. That's it, nope. We're getting a trainer. Nope. <laughs> I am giving you this on one condition, okay? Okay, what? I need a video of the first time you turn it on in front of this one. Done. <laughs> Deal. Deal. Yeah. Yeah, after you. Hi, yep, David. Okay, now I forgot one last important thing and that's that the ZenBook Duo actually comes with an active stylus, which can be used within Windows like any active stylus. And because it's active, it's more precise and has the ability to use hover and other features that passive styluses just can't. Now, there is no dedicated place in the laptop to put this, but it's nice that they give it to you with the laptop for free. Cheers! <laughs> Okay, so we're at like one of my favorite udon places in New York City. It's delicious. But like, come on, the egg has a stamp. If that doesn't say it's good, I don't know what does. She went and paid the little jerk. You jerk! <laughs> <laughs> I want to win! Okay. Calling it a night. Um, I have to admit, I like the laptop more than I thought I would. I, it, the form factor. I actually just think it's kind of cool. Um, and obviously you have to commend Asus for even attempting such a thing, but not just attempting it. This is the second gen of it and they've actually improved it. So they're committed to it. And, and it is more useful than I thought it would be. Now, if you guys wanna check out more of the features and stuff, my friend Michael Josh from Gadget Match actually did a hands-on video with this laptop that I'll link below. And also you can check out Michael Fisher, Mr. Mobile, my other buddy, who did some more testing of things like the webcam and uh, the AI noise cancellation feature, which is actually kind of cool. We were messing with it um, that I didn't get a chance to do in this video. So check both of those out and um, yeah, let me know what you guys thought of this video of the laptop. Uh, always appreciate hearing from you guys in the comments below. If you like this video though, please thumbs up or share it. It's greatly appreciated. Also check out the rest of the channel. If you like to see there, please subscribe and ding the bell next to subscribe so you can notify when I do new videos. As always though, regardless, thanks for watching.